What's going on, y'all? It's J.D. Pakel. Today on The Hard Count, we're going to talk about Texas' move to the SEC and how that impacts their rivalry with A&M. First things first, while you're here, subscribe to the channel. Like the video if you feel like it, but subscribe to the channel. We've had a lot of great growth at Sikkim365. 365. 365 Sports is the YouTube channel. It's only going to get bigger from here. Trust me, you're going to want to be on board. Now, to the main point. Texas and Texas A&M have had bad blood for what feels like ever. They haven't played since 2011. Texas coming back to the SEC means, guess what? They got a date with the Aggies yet again on an annual basis. To be determined, I hope it's on Thanksgiving Day like it was because that would be a lot of fun. And honestly, this is just great for the health of college football. Like, college football is better when you have these classic rivalries playing. Even more so, college football is better when you have these rivalries healthy. And I'm hoping it starts to become that way as it's been obviously fairly lopsided in recent years. Texas owns this series, 76-37. to 37. Five ties, we won't get into that because ties are for losers. Haven't played since 2011, like I mentioned, but the last six times they've played, they've split it, three games apiece. So all that's to say, got to have a tiebreaker here for this seventh one. I know it's not a tiebreaker, but A&M, you're trending upward right now. This is a chance to make up a lot of ground. Now, you got about 40 games to make up, but long story short, you're gonna get you're not you're gonna get this game back, and it's gonna be a lot of fun for everybody. So, how does this rivalry change? How is the rivalry gonna be impacted for the fact that it's now in the SEC? Well, like I mentioned, for starters, they're gonna play, and I think this is significant for a couple of reasons. One of which being, for Steve Sarkeesian, you want to make a splash as the Texas head coach. You want to be the guy. You want to go ahead and be the savior in Austin and kind of win the whole crowd over. Can you imagine if that first game, they just take the Aggies to school? Now, will it happen? I don't know. There's a lot of things that go into play, whether, uh, you know, when this game happens, how Texas is trending. Is Steve Sarkeesian even the head coach when they play each other for the first time? If it's in 2025 and you know how they are down there in Austin, sometimes they're a little impatient with their head coaches. So is he the guy? We'll see. But bottom line, this could give Steve Sarkeesian a lot of job stability if they're going to go ahead and beat AM right off the bat. Also, it puts a lot of pressure on him. Let's say they walk in there, they lose the first two games. Let's say they play in 2023, they lose the first two games. Is he out? Is I mean, how much importance are you placed on this rivalry? So it just adds a whole new layer to coaching at one of these schools. Same thing for Jimbo Fisher. Immense pressure to beat the other school, and that's why we love rivalries. But if you're a head coach, the pressure, the ante, just got upped quite a bit. I think this also is phenomenal because it removes the stigma that one school is better than the other for being in the SEC. Again, Texas has owned this series, y'all. 76 to 37. We're not talking about ties. But the stigma was always, well, we're, we're in the, the superior conference as the Aggies. We, we play in just a, lo, just a level before the, the, uh, the NFL. Like the SEC is the breeding ground for NFL superstars. And you can have your Big 12. That's cool. We appreciate that. But down here in the SEC, we play real football. Quote, unquote, it just means more. And now for the first time, we're going to have both of these programs on equal footing playing each other on a yearly basis with the same patch on their jerseys. Like that is going to be removed completely because... My dad went to UT. I worked in Bryan College Station for a while. That pinkies up mentality in the SEC, that's a real thing. And so these brands are both very powerful. They both have, I believe Texas has, has a chance to be really good. They both have a really high ceiling. Obviously, AM a little closer to theirs at this point in time with their New Year's Six Bull win a year ago. Bottom line, it's just more equal footing, and the SEC stigma isn't something we're going to have to worry about for a long time coming. Finally, competition with recruiting. Texas has really recruited well, even in the Big 12. I say even in the Big 12 just because the SEC bump is very real for AM. They were averaging around 20 nationally, meaning they were about the 20th best class nationally is where they were hanging about with the Big 12. They joined the SEC immediately in that 2011 to 2020 span. They averaged the number 10 spot. So you can't tell me it doesn't mean a little something to be in the SEC, even more so to be competitive in the SEC. So for Texas, are you able to then recruit some places you weren't recruiting as well before? Do you go into some of these Southeast states and just have an enormous presence as opposed to just, you know, a solid presence? Remains to be seen. But we're going to see this rivalry happen year round. It's not going to be, okay, you play on Thanksgiving and then that's it. It's, no, you play on Thanksgiving and then you go play in January in the living room for the four-star receiver, for the top quarterback in the class. Like, there's a lot of things that are going to be exciting about this rivalry year-round that we're going to benefit from. So, no love lost between each school. 
I'm so happy it's here. I'm so happy that we're going to finally get these schools back on the field together and let them settle on the field because the, the conversations from each market, from each school was, was just too much to handle. We're going to finally settle this, how it's supposed to be settled between the white lines. And that's going to be just, like I said, great for college football and great for college football fans like you and me. And I, I can't wait to watch it. So again, subscribe to the channel, like the video, go ahead and give me a follow if you feel so inclined at JD Piquel, J-D-P-I-C-K-E-L-L on Twitter or wherever you like to follow your social medias. That's it for us here at The Hard Count. We're going to keep this party rolling and we will see y'all next time.